sheep will always follow the shepherd because a sheep is defendless and have no me mechanism for his own protection. So the sheep will always wait to see where the shepherd is carrying the staff. That's what the shepherd does. He holds the staff. And then as he's hitting the staff, the sheep can hear the tapping of the staff. And he can also see the sheep and follow him. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in times where you have to depend on God's voice to know whether you should leave your house or not leave your house. We are at that particular point in time. It was Pastor Messi that was sharing with me that when they went for a um, uh, um, music program um, with uh, Pastor Chintok, and the members of the church were saying that, I'm quoting her, the members of the church were saying that because of the crisis in, the, in Joss, sometimes you are leaving your house, there's no crisis. There's no problem. But before you know it, you are caught up in somewhere. And if you didn't position yourself well, you can even die. So they leave the house, sir, not knowing whether they will come back. So they decided to train their ears to hear the voice of God so that they will know whether they should leave the house that morning. And if I'm leaving, should I go to the right or should I go to the left or should I go to the down? Listen, those of us in the south, we have been in a place of comfort and convenience. And now some things are happening around us. So you left your house yesterday. You are not sure. You didn't expect that something was happening. One of my daughters told me that while she was coming to the school of the prophetic, the people who were robbing were hitting cars. They got to the car in front. Pastor Ben, you actually said this thing in 2010. What we're saying, you said in 2010. He said, the, the car in front, they knocked on the car and collected everything. The second person, they knocked on the car. They collected everything. When he got to her, they didn't touch her. They just went to the next car. So you can see that shallow Christianity is not going to work for us anymore. Because you're not going to depend on CNN or EBS or NTA or any, any of the major media or Facebook to hear whether you should run or not. You need to hear before you step out. As I was going back here, one of my daughters going to me say, enter house or enter house or enter house. He said, then there's one house there. I just, there is this safety in my heart that where I was going, it is preordained by God that I should be there and listen to me. When the government sends you on an errand, they also give you an entourage. So the sheep that, that belong to me. So hearing the voice of God is not for pastors. It's not for ever. It is for everybody now. One of my daughters, a WhatsApp message, she said, they cannot run when I run today. He said, since when I, I'm quoting her, he said, since when I do a do state. And he said, they were running. Even a madman was following them to run. <laughs> he said, we didn't know what, what we are running from, whether it was behind. But was, they just hear run, 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 run. You saw all sundo. You know that kind of run you are running? Your leg will be touching your head. At this point, friends, touch your heart. Say, I have to hear God. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I come here. Hey, as long as you hear him, he said, no one can snatch you out of my hands. It's not as if they won't try. When the enemy shall rise up like the flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against it. They will try. But ah, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because in that place, the voice of God is with me. Say, I will hear the voice of God. So the voice of God is your safety and security. You can't figure life out by yourself. So a road may look good. It's only God that knows what is on the road. Let's look at the second scripture. The second scripture is um, John 16 verse 17. God is speaking. Can you hear him? John 16, 17. I want you to follow the conversation. But when the spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. Let's break it one after the other. Has the spirit of truth come? Yes, the Holy Spirit has already come. One of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to guide you into the truth. Now friends, what is the truth? When you, when you come into the inner healing circle, you discover that many of the things we believe about life may be lies. Because when you look at any matter, there is another, there is an underlying reality behind that matter. If you go to the hospital and the doctor says to you, ah, 
We are sorry. We saw cancer. That's what they saw. But behind that cancer is the spirit of cancer. If you don't deal with the spirit of cancer and just take medication, you haven't dealt with the matter. You must deal with it comprehensively. Spirit, soul, and body. So I can be looking at Pastor, Pastor Vic. She looks good to me. Talks very well. Sounds very well. I remember what happened to me before I got married. A young man came around me. Sells diamond. Everything about him is standard and good. And of course, as an evil girl, whether you like it or not, <laughs> especially if you have, if poverty has burnt you somewhere, if you see something, whether the, you won't hear, what God is saying will not be important. Everything he showed me, he attends a mainline denomination, and then in that denomination, it's very close to his pastor. So, from my standard, I concluded that this is the man of, of the moment. God, I have been praying for a marriage partner. I wasn't, I wasn't interested. Now, someone has come. But somewhere, somewhere, something inside me was saying, all that glitters is not diamond. I said, I reject it, I bind it, I curse it in Jesus' name. I said to myself, now that God is about to lift me from poverty, it is now that this voice, I reject that voice. Anywhere that voice has come, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Even when Papa Chidume brought that voice, I got angry with Papa Chidume and said, because you are married, you don't want me to marry. But my spiritual father is a very stubborn person. He said, I know that this is not the one. I say, I know that this is the one. He said, how did you know? I said, the indicators are there already. I said, daddy, he sells diamond. It means I will even, you have a daughter who has a husband who is a diamond seller. Ministry will be moving at the speed of light. He said, I still feel that this is not the person. Got a very long story short because of time. After her daughter married to the gentle, wonderful husband I married today. <laughs> two years after my marriage, the man called me. He said, I need to apologize to you. I need to apologize. He said, that time I was coming and I was trying to be your friend. He discovered from tests that he was HIV positive. But a, a prophet prophesied to him that he needs to find someone who is on fire for God. That when he sleeps with the person, that the HIV will die. So you can see, the spirit guides you into the truth. There is a way that seems right unto a man. The end thereof is death. It's not every open door that is your door. It's not every breakthrough that is your breakthrough. You need to find the leading of the spirit. Lord, are you in this with me? The prophet said he had the wind. The Lord was not in the wind. He had the earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. Then a still small voice. The Lord is in that one. Firm builders you can't afford to continue in 2021 without hearing his voice. You need the guidance of the spirit. You can accuse someone falsely. You can look at someone. The person looks proud. The person is not proud. You can look at someone. The person looks very humble. The person is not humble. You can look at someone. The person is very, very quiet. And then you, you and the person start talking. The person has the worst kind of hot temper. So you will not collect. So all of us must be careful. Say guidance of the Holy Spirit. Doesn't matter how I feel, I believe, Lord. There is healing. Say, as we worship, and as we worship in your presence, there is so much healing available, Lord. It's flowing.
of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is not speaking of his own initiative and I also want to tell us this that you must understand when to speak and when not to speak that's why our pastor taught us a leaf it's not every time that is a talking time there is a time you want to do something God will say keep quiet he doesn't need to explain all of it to you because he knows that that conversation will cause trouble and what you said will be used against you in the future. So when he's telling you to keep quiet now, you will hear now, you're wiser than God. You are pumping like tire that Volcanizer is pumping. God is saying, calm down, calm down, be calming down. Be, he said, no, let me show them I'm not a stupid Christian. Christianity is not stupidity. Calm down, calm down, fiam. They didn't enter trouble. They say, who are the people there? The police, police, first of all, I say, hey, God tell me, make a no talk. Oh. And then they rope everything on your head. You are trying. So Christianity is not a religion, it's a way of life. You go to the shop, they want to sell something to you. They said this one is 5,000. The other one that looks like it is 2,000. You say, once something is more expensive, it means that it's the best. God says, darling, take the one of 2,000 in this contest. You say, he said, God, you don't get sense. This one is 5,000. It's hotel, hotel, authentic. This one is 2,000. God said, but take the one of hotel, hotel. Then you take the one of 5,000. You drink it. For the next seven days, you're having a runny stomach. You have an interview to attend. You can't attend the interview because you, you must be in the running stomach, uh, conducive environment. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Then you say, God does not answer prayer. He answered. You refuse to listen. Open, say, God, open my ears. Help, him, help me to hear. Shout, he say, help me to hear. Say, help me to hear. The doctor that will treat you and you'll start telling stories, you will miss the doctor's appointment. The boss you will enter and you will return. That boss will go before time. As a message shared with us this morning, at the prayer, pastor's prayer meeting. He said that she was meant to live where she was, but something happened. What was it that happened? They couldn't locate the hall they were looking for. So he and Pastor Charles were running around and around and around. She said, Pastor Charles, you'd always like to do a party and make her go house. She didn't know that Androbas, where she was going to go, Androbas had waylaid people there. So that running around and around, she was delayed by, some, by about an hour. By the time she came back, they said they just robbed here. I pray for you. May God guide you into all the truth. Amen. I pray for you today. Just open your mouth and just pray in the Holy Spirit. Lord, I need to help me to make sense of this situation. If there is no police, there is a voice of the Holy Spirit. Guide me into the truth. Who should I do business with? Who should I not do business with? Lift up your voices, fan builders. You can't cure desert places if you don't hear the voice of God. You can't cure desert places. In the name of Jesus. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. At 10 minutes, so we're going to pray. Just everybody begin to get ready. We're going to pray. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. The first time Pastor Ben came to marry me, everything about him didn't look okay to me. His ear was too big. <laughs> and for some of the people that were, I said, I said, look at his ear now. They said, your child's ear go be like this. Oh. They said, don't worry, if you see his dad, and his dad's ear is like that, you will now decide whether you should marry him or not. Imagine, make him decision of life with ear, ear. So the first day I saw the dad, I was looking at the ear. And I just told the person, the papa ear, the lad. I said, you're finished now, you're finished. Say, so means your children's ear will be like that. And listen, I was going to make that decision because of ear, 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 ear. After some time, they said, ah, 
He doesn't, he's not generous. I said, how do you mean? He said, you see, a man that wants to marry Pastor K, if he's coming now, he will carry bags of uh, Mr. Beast. He will come, he will share for him and now, hear and him. And what one has? That is, there'll be a lot of noise. He'll be making a lot of noise. They said, because he's not making a lot of noise, he's not the right person. I will almost make that decision. I said, make I even go pray. When I went to pray, I didn't hear anything. He said, the one you heard before, you haven't done anything with it. Imagine make, I, may you not make, make decision because of ear, ear, ear. Or make decision because uh, he's not distributing uh, 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 Mr. Beach, palliative, palliative. <laughs> A girl got into a relationship, and the relationship had been very turbulent. I asked her, I said, ah, how did you get into marrying this person? He said, I just like the English. I said, what kind of English? He said, when he talks, he will say, then again. When he talks, he will say, then again. He said, that then again is what made me fall in love with you. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Say, Lord, help me to hear your voice. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let me to hear your voice. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You're free to stand. If you want to stand, just stand. You want to stand. Don't be afraid to stand. It's all those who are led by the Spirit as sons of God. Let me to hear your voice. Let me to hear your voice. Lift up your voices. Let's pray together in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray together. If you don't pray, just sing. Just sing. Just sing to him. In the name of Jesus. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. And he answered and said, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Bread alone is your source of livelihood. If you want to enjoy real life, you want your life to be efficient, to be strong, to be active, to be powerful, to be fresh. You want your life to be endless in God's kingdom. You cannot depend all your entire confidence and security is in your source of livelihood. You cannot entrust your life to the faithfulness of your boss or the faithfulness of a system. Any system can fail at any particular point in time. At the coronavirus, many industries, many companies were sacking their staff, firing their staff. So you can't say that because you have strong work that they pay you in millions, that that is your source of confidence. Man shall not place his entire confidence for effective life on his source of livelihood. So what should you do? Say, man shall live by the word. Say by the word. It's not just, he said, by every word. That means rama. Man shall live by every rama that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What is rama? Rama is the instruction you need for today. Now the Bible says that the word is a light, a lamp. And then the word is a light. In other words, if I'm leaving this church, should I turn right? Usually, my method is to turn right. Should I still turn right? Maybe at this particular point in time, he will cause you to turn left. Now, I'm not saying when you get there, start saying, oh God, should I turn right or should I? No. What I'm saying is that create it, let it become your default setting. Begin to grow in your relationship with the Father. Now, if you grow in your relationship with the Father, there is a continuous conversation that will be going on. So when you get to that place, you won't even know you are being led because it's your default setting. He will just lead you. But every word, you must have a word. You, you must have a life scripture. Listen, you must become a word of God addict. You can't be studying your Bible with pen knife Bible. You won't understand it. You didn't buy it. You took it from a hotel. Gideon's Bible. Or someone forgot their own in church. You took it. No. You must invest in your spiritual. Listen, the word of God is your raw material for tomorrow. The raw material you need to create your dreams is the word. Everything in this world was created by the word. You can't afford to live life without Bible. You can't. You must read it in the morning. Read it at night. In fact, now you can even play it. You can play 20 scriptures in one hour. Oh my God. Man shall not live by being connected. Man shall live by Rema. I'd like you to lift your hands and ask him for a Rema for today. Great is your faithfulness, Lord my Father. There is no shadow of turning with you. Thou changeth not, and your compassion they fail not. As you have been, so will you ever be. 
Lord, we ask you for the lamp. The lamp is for my feet. The light is for my future. The lamp is for my feet. The light is for my tomorrow. tomorrow oh my god let's take the last scripture then we'll go into prayer isaiah chapter 50 verse 40 to 5 isaiah chapter 50 verse 45 when you get home you can read the, all the others isaiah chapter 40 50 verse 4 to 5 isaiah chapter 50 okay it shall come to pass in the last days that i will pour forth my spirit on all mankind your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall, shall see visions and their old men shall dream dreams are there young men here this is what the Bible said. You will see vision. In other words, you will see into the heart of God. You will see what God is seeing. You will see it from God's perspective. And then you will have the wisdom to practicalize it, to bring the practicality on earth so that men will understand. Wisdom is not just application of knowledge. Wisdom is actually in spiritual intelligence. Wisdom is application of God's kind of strategies into what is happening on earth. Every young man here, every, give me the scripture again. He said, man shall not, he, he says, your sons and daughters, are there daughters here? 
You know that you have been told to prophesy. Now, I want you to understand, prophesy does not mean shake, 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 and say, thus says the Lord. That's not what it is. Prophesy actually means to, as it were, provoke a kind of reasoning that will shift the way people see life. Because prophesy means you are telling people things from God's point of view. To prophesy means that you're a culture architect. To prophesy means that you're a solution provider. You can say, listen, I said to them at the prophetic school, your, your contest is your sphere of influence. Help people understand God. Help people understand what is happening around the world. From your sphere of influence, you don't have to say Jesus. You don't have to say Holy Spirit. You don't have to say, oh, just bring God's mindset on it. So, if I'm a if I'm a, a, a writer, I'm going to write from God's perspective. I don't need to put Jesus. I don't need to put Mary. I don't need to put Lazarus. But I will write what, what is in God's mind, reflecting what God wants to do. And then I can bring social reform. Now, if I am a producer, I can begin to produce. Now, I am downloading scripts from heaven. It doesn't have Jesus. It doesn't have Mary. It doesn't have Lazarus. It doesn't have John chapter 4. For me here, I can talk to you with John chapter 4, chapter 5. But someone in the judiciary who is sitting and I say, George, you are operating the kingdom from a different dimension. So when he says prophesy, he's saying to you, say what God is saying by using the language of the vocabulary of your trade. 